Lesson 12.4a, using experimental probability to make a prediction. To make a prediction using experimental probability, we write an equation to find the likelihood of the event. We use the likelihood to make the prediction. We can use a proportion or a percent equation. We learned in video 4.2b that a proportion is a statement that two rates or ratios are equivalent. In a proportional relationship, the rate of change is constant. Proportional relationships are often described using words such as per or for each. So we might see $2 per liter or $2 for each liter. If there were five liters, we know we would do two times five, wouldn't we? When you see the words per or for each, Think multiplication. If it's $2 per liter and there are 5 liters, we're going to do 2 multiplied by 5. Scientists study data to make predictions. We can use probabilities to make predictions in our daily lives. Emma found that the experimental probability of her picking an ace from a deck of 52 cards is 1 tenth or 10%. Out of 40 picks, about how many aces could she predict she could make? So we have two methods. Here's method one and method two. Method one is we're going to use a proportion. Method two is we're going to use a percent equation. We know one-tenth of the time she picks an ace, so we need to know out of 40 picks. We need to find one-tenth of 40. We think 10 times some number is equal to 40. Well, 10 times 4. So we know that's a 4. We need to multiply the numerator by the same thing. We get 1 times 4. We get 4 fortieths. That means about 4 aces out of 40 picks. Method 2, use a percent equation. We need to find 10% of 40. We multiply. When you see of, you can think multiplication also, along with per. We have 10% multiplied by 40. That would be written as a decimal as 0 0.10. We multiply it by 40, and we get 4. Writing the equation algebraically, we say it's equal to x, and then we solve for x. We find the value of x. Here we have a spinner with five colors. Bob found that the experimental probability of the spinner arrow landing on red is 2 fifths, or 40%. Out of 45 spins, about how many times could he predict it will land on red? So we have 2 fifths of 45 or 40% 40 of 45. 2 fifths, we need to have this denominator match 45. We know 5 times 9 is 45, so we need to multiply the numerator by the same thing. We have 18 40 fifths. That tells us about 18 out of 45 spins will land on red. Method two, using the percent equation, we have 40% of 45, 40% out of 45. We're going to multiply as a decimal 0 0.40. We could even do 0 0.4, couldn't we? Because this trailing zero to the right of the tenths place isn't really necessary. We multiply it by 45 to solve for x algebraically and we get 18. We have two decimal hops in the equation. There's two decimal hops in the product. We have 18 is equal to x. So again, we know about 18 out of 45 spins, it will land on red as our experimental probability. Since these were experimental probabilities, we can't say it's certain that Emma will pick an ace four out of 40 picks or that Bob Spinner will land on red 18 out of 45 spins. A prediction is not a guarantee. It's simply a reasonable assumption based on experimental results. On Saturdays, one-fourth or 25% of a bakery's sales consist of coffee cake. Out of 120 customers, about how many coffee cakes can they predict they will sell? So, method one, using a proportion, we're going to do one-fourth 
and multiply it by a number for the numerator and denominator, that same number, so that the denominator is 120 and the numerator is in proportion. We know 4 times 30 is equal to 120. That means we need to multiply the numerator by 30. We get 30 one 120ths. That means about 30 coffee cakes to cover Saturday's sales. Using the percent equation, we find 25% of 120. We multiply 0 0.25 times 120, and we have two hops in the equation, so there's two hops in the product. It's about 30 coffee cakes. We solve it for x to do it algebraically and find the value of x as 30. Now this prediction shows the bakery about how many they should make for Saturday's sales. And maybe they should make a few more just in case there's more than 120 customers. Because this was just a prediction, they could sell a little more or a little less. Remember, we can write probabilities as ratios, decimals, or percents. And past performance can predict a future performance by using a proportion or percent equation to find the likelihood of an event. The conditions we use to calculate experimental probability and the subject of the prediction should match. For example, Saturday coffee cake sales predicted by previous Saturday coffee cake sales. The conditions and the subject match. We can't predict Saturday's coffee cake sales by Sunday's muffin sales. We're finished with 12.4a. We're going to move on to 12.4b using experimental probability to make a qualitative prediction. Keep trying your best. Have a great day and join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.